Hey everybody, have you ever tried to use a photo scan on a terrain that is not perfectly flat and you've run into this problem where you take it and you try to sit there and you try and line them up and bend them around so that they kind of hide their seams but if you really look at it you can see that you've got clearly gaps, you've got bits that don't quite work and it just, it just doesn't work all that well. Um, so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at actually taking these and first we're going to make sure they tessellate correctly so if we look at this you can see that there's a clear kind of division where the other one was and if we get down close we can see that there's floating bits and bits that don't line up so we're going to look at first how to solve that and then what we're going to do is look at how to actually take these and deform them to a terrain and this might be a little too extreme but it'll show some of the limitations of this technique pretty well so to start off with let's figure out how to make these tessellate correctly it's it's pretty simple so what we're going to do is we're going to using circle select which you can get just by pressing c we're just going to go and we're going to select a little bit around the edge of this entire object. And don't worry about it being uniform or not uniform. In fact, the less uniform it is, it'll often look better. Because you really don't want this to be super visible in the final product. But we're going to go all the way around selecting just a little bit. And then, once we have a little bit of this whole thing selected, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on proportional editing. Then we're going to go from a side view and what we want is our edge what we want is our edge to be below the lowest point. So we can see this is our lowest point right here. So we're going to need to bring this edge down quite a ways. And there's a good chance depending on what your photo scan is, you will not have to go quite as extreme in this, which makes this a good example to learn on because it'll be a little bit trickier to get to work. So first off, we're just going to scale it down and we're going to get just as little as we can because we want to just slide it all down some. Then let's actually S, Z and scale the whole edge down a bit. It'll make it more uniform so it ends on more of a single height. And then we can move it down just a little bit more. Maybe change the size of our proportional editing a little bit. And let's see how that's looking. So now if we take this and we duplicate it, you can see it kind of just perfectly blends together. And we can do it again. Let's rotate it. Let's scale it a little bit. We're just making sure that there's no gaps up here. And we can see right here, a gap kind of appears. Another thing is when you're doing photo scans like this, make sure to always click Alt D instead of Shift D. That way you'll instance them and it'll be way less intensive on your VRAM. So let's go ahead and just select this first one. We'll go into tab, we'll go into edit mode. Then we'll just use circle select and we'll just sort of grab the bits that are just a little too tall. And let's shrink this down quite a bit. We only want to adjust it a little bit. So we'll go and just bring it down just a tiny little bit. Make sure we're, we're just getting just as much as we need to. That's not quite enough, so we'll pull it down a little bit more. Let's just grab this a little bit. And really the goal is to take it down as little as we need to, but make sure we don't take it down too little. See anything sticking out over here? That all looks pretty good. And really, once you get it pretty close, it should blend in fairly well. So we're just going to go around and make sure we clean up all these little spots that are sticking out. So that's looking that's looking pretty good. Let's give it a couple more a couple more duplicates here just to make sure no other spots stick out. And that's that's fine. That's good enough for what we're doing. Oh, we don't want to undo that. We're just gonna delete the extra ones. And now let's do the same thing for our little our little rock pile. So we're just gonna click on it, go into edit mode, and we're just gonna select right around the very edge. I might even come back through and deselect some of this, because this might be a bit too thick of a selection. Because we, we just want enough that the proportional editing gets a good hold on everywhere we need to, to lower. All right. And now we can see this bit sticks up a lot. So actually, before we move everything, I'm just going to grab that part specifically and move it down and make sure we've got somewhat uniform here. Anyway, let's go and reselect our edge real quick. That's definitely too thick. We'll just reduce it in a couple of these really thick spots just by holding shift to remove selection and then and we can use a pretty small edit mode for this or proportional editing for this and unfortunately these aren't the best photo scans but they are ones I have taken myself so I will go ahead and provide a project file in the description below so you can take these you can do whatever you want with them uh, use them do this whatever you want so let's just make sure this also tessellates now and we can even make sure they tessellate together so if we kind of do this we can see they blend really nicely and I kind of color match these materials a little bit so they blend they blend pretty well and they will work fantastically for what we're doing today you can even scale them rotate them you can see that kind of gets a very natural sort of muddy 
and damage looked with very little work at all. The limitation of this is that we have to be flat because we can't rotate any of these. It just, it just breaks apart very quickly. So let's go ahead and clean up all the ones we don't need in here. And then let's look at how to deform it to our terrain. So this is also pretty simple. We're just gonna snap the cursor to our object with Shift S. Then we're gonna Control A, add a plane. Now we're gonna move this plane down so it's right around the bottom of our object. In fact, we want it to be a tiny bit below and the distance doesn't matter too much. Then we'll go into edit mode and we'll just sort of edge slide. We'll just move these edges around until they are completely encompassing our plane. We don't want it, like if we look right here, this is pretty close, but just to make sure we leave it a little extra because we don't want this overhanging the edge of our plane. That's very important for later. All right, that's pretty good. If we go to side view, we can see the exact distance. Make sure it's all below, and it looks like looks like that'll be fine. Then, when we're, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an edge loop because we want these to deform square, and that's that's fine. So we'll select everything. We'll subdivide it once. Let's hop over here so we can see our geometry a little bit better. Twice maybe, I think that'll be all right. We don't need too much geometry for this. Then we'll select our photo scan. Let's pop back over to this mode to look dev. Then we'll go to modifiers with our photo scan selected and we'll get a surface deform modifier. Surface deform. Then we'll click the little eyedropper and we'll select our plane. Then we'll click bind. Now, if we click on our plane, go into edit mode, we can see if we move this, it also deforms our photo scan, which is, which is cool, but it's not all that helpful just yet. Next, what we'll do is we will click on our plane, so not a photo scan, our plane that underlies it. We'll click on modifier, and we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier. Shrink wrap. Then we'll switch it from nearest point to surface over to project, and from positive, and we also want negative, then we'll click Z. So what this will do is it will project onto our target object, which we're going to click target and select our plane. Now we'll select both our plane and our photo scan so we can move them around together and move it so it's over our uh, terrain. Then we can move it up and down. You can see that doesn't really make a difference, but what we can do is scale them both together. We can rotate them. It will all update dynamically. And I have found it's actually not too bad in terms of performance once it's still. It might be a little laggy moving it around, but once you're no longer moving it, it seems to just keep its calculations and be fairly performant. And one thing to note is this can get a little limited based on how steep your terrain moves. Now you can see this is a bit of a low poly mesh here, but it seems to work all right. So we lose a little bit of the detail from our, from our terrain, but in this instance, it seems to be fine. Now what we can do is select both our plane. Actually, before we do that, let's click on our plane. We'll go to over to the material editor. We'll click new. Then instead of principled on surface, we're gonna click on that and we're going to select a transparent. It'll turn black, but that's okay. All we need to do is turn the blend mode over to alpha clip and turn shadow to none because we don't want it having any shadows at all. Then we're gonna hop back over here and we don't have this issue at this moment, but sometimes the plane we're using to project onto our terrain can clip into the terrain and if it perfectly overlaps you'll get little z-fighting artifacts so if we just turn the offset to like 0 0.07 just something super tiny it should just help that from keep that from happening now what we can do let's go ahead and shrink these both down and if we click alt d we can duplicate it rotate it duplicate it again rotate it some more duplicate it yet again rotate it some more and you can see we get this sort of perfectly blended terrain that matches our normal terrain. And we can see we're having some issues again with this uh, Z fighting. So if we go into edit mode, we see we have that bit selected already. So let's just pull it down just a little bit more. We'll go real small with it. So it just sort of drops off right on the edge there. And we'll select that. We'll grab this bit and we'll pull this maybe a little more on proportional editing. Pull it down some. And now if we hop back over here, we can see we're still having the problem. And I think it's because it's currently clipping into the same spot here. So as we move this down, the bit is going into also goes down. So we'll just grab, try to find its plane again. And we'll just give it a rotate. We'll just make it clip with somewhere else. And you can see that's, and solved the issue, kinda. Um, unfortunately, this, this, this photo scan is kind of, it's kind of bad because it goes down so far. So it makes it a little tricky to work with, but we can totally cover that up with this photo scan. So we'll snap our cursor to it. We'll click Shift A, we'll add a plane. 
We're just doing the same thing again. We'll run through it a little bit quicker this time. Move it over. We'll scale it up on the Y so it's perfectly terrain. Now we'll, con we'll, now we'll hit Control A to apply scale. Then we'll go into edit mode. We'll subdivide it. We'll click A to select it all and we'll do subdivide just a couple times. We get a little bit of geometry to work with. Now we'll click on our photo scan. We'll add a surface deform. We'll click on the plane as our object and we'll click bind. Now we'll click on our plane, add a new modifier. We will add a shrink wrap. If I can find the shrink wrap, there it is. Then we'll select the train as our target. We'll set it to project Z and negative. Now we'll select both things. And if we move them over, now you can see here's one limitation where if you have taller object, especially like rocks and you have them deform over a very steep thing, there will be some noticeable stretching. But if we just kind of take this right off to the edge and maybe rotate it around, we can kind of cover that gap without getting too far into it. And really, this is very much on the edge of what I'd recommend doing. If you really want to be ideal with it, I would go a little bit less crazy with the terrain and try and keep it pretty smooth. And you'll have a lot easier time not getting funky artifacts. Another thing to note is if this is too high, you want it to like change the depth of it, you can try moving up and down. And I guess that will work fine as long as you don't have the plane selected. But you can also change this offset here. And that will also move it up and down with the shrink wrap. So let's just sort of scooch that over a little bit. And there you go. Let's also add our transparent material to this. So we'll just try and find one of the other planes that already has it. Nah, it's not working. So we'll just go to material, we'll cl click on this, and we'll select the material O2. And if you want to be correct, you could also name it. Keep things more clean. And that is the basis of the effect that I'm going for here. And we can kind of keep, we can make a bigger terrain. You can make more of these. You can do this for as many different types of photo scans as you want. And it all kind of just works together really well. If you have one that has a little bit less variance in the height, like it doesn't drop down as far as this photo scan does in the deep spots. Like this photo scan has some very deep ruts in it, so it's a little bit harder to get to work than some other photo scans. Like over here goes down pretty far. But generally, even this photo scan that's not ideal to work with works pretty well. Let's go ahead and grab a few more of this and duplicate it around as well. So we'll just put one down here, put one down here. Hi everybody, future me here. It turns out that if you wish to edit this in edit mode, Say we want a big old bump right here specifically. If we go back into object mode, that does not apply unless we select our plane, hide the shrink wrap, then unbind it and rebind it to the surface to form. Now we can hop back into our shrink wrap, recheck it, and you can see that now applies, which is why I couldn't solve the problem of them not clipping before because it I wasn't rebinding it. Hope that helps you if you're having the problem. Um, as a side note, I have fixed the funky not tessellating correctly issue for the project file. Anyway, hope that helped. Now, again, if you want either this project file so you don't have to set it up yourself, or if you want these photo scans that I did this with, I'll go ahead and have a project file for this down below in the description, uh, which you can take, you can pull apart, you can take these photo scans and do whatever you want with them. Um, that's really all I have for you today, so um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.